Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you the modifications that I've made to my Lego Grand Prix Racer model number 42000. Um, the modifications that I have made would be in the front up here there is the servo motor buried inside here. Um, here's a link to the instructions that I have on how to actually build that front end. And I actually, in that same video, I show you how to easily replace the original location where the motor sits with the fake engine. One of these bad boys in here, I show you how to take one of the large motors and install it there. But I found playability with just one large motor um, wasn't so great, so I took another stab at it. Um, but I've also, in this model, I've tried to cut down the weight as much as I can so I can get the best power to weight ratio. Um, but it's still quite a heavy model, so it needs a lot of power. And um, that's where it comes into here. I am using two extra large motors. I'll show you those in a second. But you could also use um, two large motors and probably get away with it. I just would not suggest using one large motor. And, um, but I'll get into the motor configuration here in a minute. Um, the next thing I have done is obviously do the two extra larges, but I've relocated the battery box because I didn't like how it sat off the back here and it kind of put a lot of weight on the back end so I found putting that right there is a lot better. I use the V2 receiver and I power both extra, uh, extra large motors through one in output right here and I run the servo motor through the other output. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna show you real quick up close. It's my little power switch on and I'm gonna just show you with this uh, remote control. I'm gonna show you more in here. It, it ends up going about at a walking pace, which is okay because the remote control probably doesn't work more than eight feet away. And then it's also got the steering in the front. And this is proportional steering in the front. But to be totally honest with you, I don't typically use that most of the time. Most of the time I use this one. It's just a little more fun. And then one other modification I do with the controller I have found is I actually take the lens out of the front. Take the lens out of the front, it just it just seems to work just slightly better. Especially in sunlight areas, but uh, I'm not going to go on my gripes about the remote controls right now. So, let's uh, open this up and I'll show you the modifications I've made. Um, in order to do this, the modifications I've had to remove the original uh, features that came with it, the power function features, which is the adjustable wing and the power up. Um, I got rid of a lot of that stuff because just just get rid of it to save some weight. So, but I actually I'm okay with it because I'd rather have it RC in this setup than the way Lego was selling it. So the way I open this up, so I got one, I got two, right? Booyah. And then there's my battery box. And the battery box just literally lifts out. And you can unplug it. But I'm going to leave it plugged in just so I can show you guys the internal workings here. Pretty much, I'm using the stock differential. But I've taken the shaft and I've kind of reinforced it as best I can, spaced it off with a half block, and then just use the number two in between right here just to hold those half blocks in. And then I use a small um, black gear. These uh, seem to be holding up pretty well. And then if you take these two motors and you reverse them around, you can actually just take all the power you can and they'll actually help each other out a little bit and then just drive it all back 
and this is all stock right here. Um, the only thing I can think of that I've really done differently is the shock mount positions here. Um, I have stepped them back a little bit. It does uh, give you a little more higher of a ride height in the back. I may do that in the front as well, just to get a slightly higher ride height, but that's minor. Um, and here I just use these L brackets. These ones right here. I just use them back there just to come off. Just pretend this piece is in the back. I just did that just to get them to step up. Okay. And then I just built up till that height. And then I just added, uh, again, one of these L brackets I added on the side right here just to add a little more stiffness. And then obviously I just use one of these with that kind of fly head on the end just to pull out so I can move up and down this. Um, I'll show you the motor right here. And this is what I like to do with the shaft. I like to take the shaft, not just end it right there. Take the shaft and bring it all the way up here. It just seems to stiffen everything up. And it and I put one of these smooth pieces. One of these smooth guys. Right in between. It just seems to uh, hold these gears in place better. And then these just pop on. I just have them with a little bit of a standoff right there. And that was to give space enough for the battery. But for the battery I had to add a little stands off just so that it wasn't hitting these gears. And then I just uh, I just attached these two pieces right here. And the battery sits in here and moves back and forth. It doesn't really move back and forth once you get this down on. And uh, for the top modification because of all this and having the battery stick up through I had to take these two pieces right here and step them up. I think it was three studs. Uh, just do a little trial in there. Just make it look like that. And then back here I had to, on this one side, because you may not have to worry about it, but I run an extra battery in my battery pack. And here's a link to that video um, for adding another rechargeable, like another battery in series here. Because I use rechargeable batteries and the voltage is lower so I just try to keep the voltage up with uh, adding an extra battery so I had to make a little more space right here so you can see the difference that I've done right here and then on the ends here because it doesn't fit exactly 100% perfect here but you just use those to step back down to here I don't think it looks too bad I'm happy with it so power on Okay. And here I'll show you, if you want to make it a slightly faster, um, and you're not, not worried about all the torque, you could put the large motor in. And You've got all these spots, so pretty much you're just sticking a black one and just having the shaft go in there. So you could actually use any motors you wanted just to try it out, but I have the extra large, so I'll use those. But the large motors, you could probably get away with using those, but I would suggest not using the M motors. Um, but yeah, you just pop them on. 
just don't mix match motors use the same motors and even here you could even run one extra one extra large motor I'll even I'll do that right now just pop that off so it just, just say it's disconnected right Power was disconnected. See, you can run this with just one. Okay. Yep, sometimes it's a pain in the butt. Sometimes you wish you don't do things. There we go. And you can just mess around with the exhaust pipes and stick them wherever you want. So, I've refixed that. Um, so that's about it. I'll show one more demonstrate one more time. Um, with the battery box once again hooked up. And the front servo control motor. So, like I said, when you want to replace the battery, this is how you set it back up. Boom. And then you're ready to drive away. And that's just one notch right there. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you guys out. It adds a lot more enjoyment to this model for me, and uh, I hope you follow my channel. Thanks.